So the question is, what are we going to need to do to do that kind of exponential growth again? So every year, we try to take a look at the state of the crowd, to try to decide where we've come from the year before and where we're going to try to go the next year. But this year, we're going to take advantage of the fact that it's 2020 and look back 10 years where we've come from in the decade and to look forward 10 years to where we need to go by 2030. We're privileged to have here with us Saul Singer, who is the author of this incredible book, Startup Nation, that was published literally at the beginning of the de last decade, November 2009. And what's so incredible about this book is it actually branded a nation. Can you imagine writing a book which its name becomes essentially the nickname for the nation around the world? When you look at what happened over this last decade, there was exponential growth both in Israel and the ecosystem, as well as here at our crowd. We went from a little over $2 billion invested in 2010 to over $8 billion invested in 2019, growth of 400%. We went from $2.6 billion in exit value to almost $22 billion in exit value. At the beginning of the decade, Israel finally was admitted into the OECD. Today, we're ranked number one in entrepreneurship by the World Economic Forum. At our crowd, we launched in 2013. Today, in 19, we celebrate, or just last year, celebrate our partnership with Stiefel. We had 24 million in commitments, funding commitments back in 2013, and now we celebrate the fact that we have $1.4 billion in commitments. We had 2,400 investors, and we now have over 42,000 signed up on our platform. We didn't have exits in 2013, and now we have 36 and counting. When you look at how this looks in terms of the capital raising, this is incredible. For any company, this would be amazing. But this is an ecosystem which is growing this way. And you look at the exit value, you see these mega exits like Mobileye for $15 billion two years ago or NVIDIA just last year for $7 billion, and there is a lot more coming. When you look at our growth at our crowd, it's been steady to the 42,000, but we want to take this to 400,000 and 4 million, I dare say, if we can get there in the next decade. Our commitments have been growing dramatically and based on what I've seen in the last day or two and what's gonna to happen today, we're going to be committing a lot more funding to these incredible companies. Last year, again, we were Israel's most active venture capital investor. And that's great because it was done democratically. You are the ones who became Israel's most active venture capital investor. 38 new companies. That's unbelievable. Give yourselves a real round of applause. Most venture capital funds are happy and proud to have 12 companies, 15 companies, 20. To invest in 38 in one year is incredible. We signed the strategic partnership with Stiefel, who is the seventh largest broker dealer in the United States. They're going to be distributing our products to their one million clients, so we're going to get a lot more investors into venture capital here, and they are also going to be helping our companies with investment banking. We'll hear from the CEO of Stiefel, Ron Krzyzewski, later on. Thank you very much for that partnership and for the strategic investment. You're going to see a lot of synergy between our two organizations over the next couple of years. Our 36 exits are among the most prominent companies really in the world. Last year, we were associated with both the Uber IPO as well as the Beyond Meat IPO. You'll be hearing shortly from the chairman of Beyond Meat. We had the opportunity last year to serve you 2,500 Beyond Meat burgers and then serve you amazing returns just a few months later as we got in as private investors into that Beyond Meat IPO before the public. 
When you look at what it takes to build a leading company, it often takes a decade. The mistake people make about thinking about technology companies, they often think, wow, it's just instant, instant presto. There's that incredible story of Jan Kuhn from the company WhatsApp, who went from needing food stamps two years later to selling his company for $19 billion. How often does that happen? Once so far. It's not a common occurrence. But what does happen is if you put in hard work you think about where you need to go, you can build a company over a decade. These are the companies that were built over the last decade. There wasn't an Airbnb or an Uber or Beyond Meat or an impo uh, uh, you know, Impossible. They didn't exist more than 10 years ago. So the question is, what are we going to need to do to do that kind of exponential growth again? What do each of us as entrepreneurs as investors, as multinational corporations who want to see this innovation flourish, what do we need to do to make sure that this next decade is as good or better than the last decade for entrepreneurial activity? First of all, we have to think beyond. The theme of this summit is going beyond. We have to think in terms of a decade. Now here in Israel, we are not the world's best experts in long-term planning. Okay, Israelis know that. I mean, there's a joke that a, a long-term business plan here is about a week. Um, but we have to sort of break out of our comfort zone. We've got to look and try to think, where do we need to go? We've got to redouble our efforts on the early stage. It turns out that we need to invest more money in seed and more money in pre-seed and in Series A. We've got to attack the big challenges not just incremental change. We've got to take more risk. We've got to take it intelligently. We've got to take it in a diversified approach, but we've got to be on the front lines saving lives, and we've got to leverage our crowd to get the network effects. When you look actually at what happened in this country in terms of early stage, you see a rather depressing statistic in the last year that early stage investment went down year to year from 2018 to 2019. It's that blue bar you see. Seed investment was only $149 million last year. And that was down. And we're committing here publicly at our crowd to redouble our efforts on seed investment. We're going to be looking for early stage. If you've got an idea, we want to talk to you because this is how we're going to build ourselves for the next decade. And in order to do that, we are active in the incubator space. We're proud to announce that we now operate as part of teams, five different incubators in Israel and around the world. Four here in Israel, no one has four incubators in Israel. From Kiryat Shmona in the north, where we have our food tech, to Yerucham, where we have our medical cannabis, to Jerusalem and Beersheba, we are active here in incubating great ideas, and you'll see many of them outside. But more importantly, we've now done our first global incubator in New Zealand, together with a great consortium, including Fonterra and Gallagher and Finisterre. And we're looking for partners all around the world who want to build incubators with us, where we can take our spirit and our technology and our know-how and leverage our global network to start doing this kind of company creation on a global basis. The predictions I'm going to make are going to be very, very simple here. You're going to hear later at the midday plenary, and I urge you to be here, the top 10 tech trends, which will go more into this. But I'm going to make four, I think, fairly safe but important predictions. On the one hand, transportation is going to change thoroughly over the next 10 years. And we're not just talking autonomous driving, which we'll get here. It's a little bit delayed in a traffic jam, okay? But it will come. But we're thinking beyond autonomous driving. Companies like Skytran, who are going to literally move us around in pods. This is going to happen in the next 10 years, you watch. We're going to be growing food, not just using plant-based technology to replace meat and to reduce carbon emissions. All that's very important. We're believers in it. We invested in Beyond Meat. We've invested in Ripple. But we're investing now in cell lines who are going to grow food and grow meat and fish. That is going to happen over the next 10 years. 
Over the next 10 years, centralized lab testing is now gonna be joined by point of care. It's already here. We are, you'll see on stage and you'll hear about companies like Site Diagnostics, but this is going to be commonplace. You're no longer gonna be dependent on centralized labs for that kind of healthcare services. And finally, artificial intelligence is going to change everything. Everyone's business is going to be thoroughly and completely disrupted. And either you're going to let it happen to you or you're going to be a change agent and make it happen. And we redouble our efforts. We have over 30 investments in AI and we're looking for hundreds because you cannot overhype AI. AI is simply going to change all of our lives. And finally, what we're doing is we're gonna offer you a really cool, I think, uh, bonus. We would like you to send an email, old fashioned email, to 2030 at rcrowd.com and simply put one name of the company you think in our portfolio who is going to be the biggest by 2030. And I promise you, we'll be back at 2030. We're putting away a whole bunch of really good wine, which will age beautifully over the next 10 years. And some of these wines are gonna to go to you if you've picked the company. Simply just take a name of one company, send the email to our crowd at 2030 and win the wine in 10 years, we'll see you then. Now, our companies are on the front lines. They're dealing with the coronavirus, they're fighting fires in Australia, they're keeping us safe from missiles. These are our companies at work. And in particular, we're very proud of our cluster of companies who are fighting cancer. Companies like Barcode, who are giving personalized chemo by essentially barcoding candidates which you get injected and then tested to know what works for you. Companies like AlphaTau, that shoots you with a radioactive dart and literally in their first clinical trials, 100% of the tumors shrunk and 79% were totally wiped out. Companies like Incitec, yes, that deserves applause. Companies like Incitec, who are crossing the blood-brain barrier by using focused ultrasound to deliver important medicine to destroy glioblastomas. Companies like HIL who are taking critical proton beam therapy and reducing it from a giant linear accelerator that takes a football field to a desktop which uses advanced lasers and nano targets. These are companies that are indeed on the front lines. But we're also fighting the coronavirus and our companies like MeMed are developing instantaneous testing to determine whether it's a bacterial or a viral infection. It's one of the few companies where the US and China are cooperating unbelievably well. The US Department of Defense is a big funder of the company, as well as Ping An from China. Site Diagnostics, again, proving that the dream of pinprick, single, double drop of blood can give you great, complete blood count. And you'll hear about that company. Companies like VocalZoom, and by the way, what they're doing for the coronavirus is they're allowing that point of care CBC testing to go on in quarantine so that you don't need to take the blood from the potential patients and move them into uh, uh, the general blood supply. Sanitize, who's got a great antiviral, antibacteria, and VocalZoom, who's developing sensors for airports. Finally today, you're going to hear from three patients whose lives have been affected and saved from three different companies. We believe that we need to get beyond the sort of technology mega trends and bring this down to people's lives because lives are being affected by these companies and we want to celebrate that. Tests revealed a life-threatening tumor growing deep at the base of Ari's brain. To do the impossible, Doctors wanted to go through Ari's nose, a so-called endoscopic skull-based surgery to reach and then remove the tumor. Look at the 
anatomy in all directions. What I can also do is I can simulate my approach. Using that 3D model, which included the tumor and the surrounding vessels, surgeons were able to spend hours practicing the procedure. If you go one millimeter beyond and you are not careful, you can injure the choroid artery, get a major bleeder. For 16 hours, doctors removed Ari's tumor piece by piece. Now, months after this groundbreaking operation, a miraculous recovery. This is Ari Elman. <laughs> Ari's parents, Jonathan and Nama, are Israelis. They went to Stanford University Me Medical Center and they found that the doctors there were using our company's surgical theater's technology. Surgical theater is a company that was founded by flight simulation experts from the Israeli Air Force who were met by U.S. brain surgeons who said, if fighter pilots can train, why can't we train using virtual reality? So they've developed this product, and not only is it saving lives, it's saving this young child's life, and we're now gonna hear a message recorded by the Elmans to this group. It's, it's something that five years ago would have been viewed as, as science fiction. It was as though we were being placed into the future. Uh, and, and I think um, this is not the first Israeli company that's reinventing the future. Uh, it is, however, an Israeli company that provided our surgeons with a tool uh, that, for all we know, um, allowed them to be extremely successful on the day of surgery and uh, ultimately save our, our son's life. We, we say in the IDF, that you, you know, it's really hard when you're going on drills and you practice, but when you go to war, if you practice well, you're going to be successful. And I think that this is what uh, gave our surgeons, our neurosurgeons, the ability to really practice very well and increase the chances for Ari's uh, success in, in this extremely complex uh, surgery. So thank you, Surgical Theater. And our crowd. Team, Team Elman! <laughs> the uh, phrase, Kashem Imunim Kal Bakav, it's difficult in the preparation, in the training, and it then becomes easy in the battle, I think, is the appropriate battle cry that we have to take to what we're doing today. We have worked for thousands of hours to put together this summit. I was trying to estimate it's simply too much. There's a lot of effort that went in here. We hope you have a great time and you enjoy it, but we're gonna ask you a favor. We want you to do a little work too. We want you to engage. We want you to listen, but then act. We need to do this together. This whole platform is built on your active participation. And it's not just writing a check, which we need you to do, but it's about helping these companies. It's about making an introduction for a distribution agreement somewhere in the world, about finding a key hire for the company, about making sure that more medical centers like Stanford are using our groundbreaking technology. It's that force multiplier, the power of this crowd that will allow our companies to go forward and to save more Ari Elmans, have an incredible day. Thank you very much. Thank you.